In this video, I'll show you how to create a simple Swift UI app that uses Apple's new uh, Foundation Models framework. We will build a minimal example where users can type a prompt, tap a button, and see the model's response directly in the app. So now let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and create a new file, and then this is going to be the view model. I'm going to call this view model. And in this view model, we're going to handle all the logic for communicating with Apple's foundation model. So what we're going to do first is import foundation models, and then we're going to create a class. So we're going to do main actor here. And then we can call this class view model. And then this is going to be an observable object. And now we're going to create our published properties that will automatically update your UI when they change. So first we're going to do published and then this is going to be the user input. So what you're going to type in and then the same thing for the output. And then again, we're going to do a Boolean here and then we're going to check if it's processing or not. This is going to be false by default. And the last property is going to be the error message which is going to be a string. And then this is going to be optional. Now let's see what the error. And then we need to import combine here. That will work. And now let's create the model. So it's going to be private let model equals system language model dot default. This gives us access to Apple's built-in model used for on-device intelligence. And now we're going to create the function that's going to run the model. So we can call it run model here. And then it's going to be an asynchronous function because it's going to handle the interaction with the model, right? And the first thing we're going to do is check if the model is actually available because you could have an older version of the device you're using that doesn't support it. So we're going to check if it's available and then else we're going to have the error message showcase model not available on this device. And then we're going to return. So that way we exit out of the function early on if the model is not available. Now, if it is available, we continue here and then we're going to set this processing to true because we're starting to process, right? And then the error message could be, could go back to being nil. And now we're going to take on the prompt. So let prompt, we're going to check if it's empty first. And then if it's empty, let's just say something like hello. So that way we do get a response. And then otherwise we can just do user input. And now, now let's create the session. So let's session. That's going to be language model session. And then here, the next thing is going to be handling the output. So we're going to do, do catch here so we can catch any issues. And then we're going to send the user's text to the model and wait for the response. So let response equal try await session dot respond. And then we're going to put in the prompt over here. And then we're going to update the output, which is shown on the UI. So output here is going to be response and this should be content. Cool. And then to catch any errors, we're going to show error message equals to error localized description. And then at the end, we're just going to mark this processing to be false because this is where we're done. So that's pretty much it for the view model. Now let's move on to the UI and actually use the U view model. We can go ahead and go to the content view here and then we're going to use the view model here. So we're going to declare a state object here and then we're going to use the view model. So this doesn't do anything yet, but we're going to start by modifying the UI here so we can remove all of this. And then we can create a navigation view here. And then a VStack. And then here we're going to create the text editor where the user enters their prompt. So we're going to go with text editor, text, view model, dot user input. Now let's quickly run this to see how it looks like. Okay, so it looks like it's still empty. So let's edit the style here. 
we can just do frame height or 150 and then let's add a border so we can actually see the text editor maybe something like opacity and then 0 0.25 and now let's run it now it should show something awesome so now we can kind of see text editor here and now let's continue and create our button here this is gonna have a label and then here the button is gonna run the model asynchronously which means we need to use a task here and then await model run model so once the button is clicked we're gonna run this function which takes us back to this right and now let's create the label we can just do step and then what I want to do here is check if the view model is processing and then if that's the case we can just show progress view because it's still processing and then next to it we can just do run model and now let's check how it looks so now let's improve the styling here we can just go with order prominent here and then we're gonna actually disable it whenever it's processing now the next thing we're gonna do is handle any errors so if there's any issues, we're gonna need to display that on the screen, right? So we're gonna do if let error equals view model dot error message. So if there is an error, we're gonna show the error. And then we're gonna specify that the text color is in red here. And the last thing we're gonna do is showcase the output, right? Now, considering the output might be big, we're gonna use the scroll view here. So you can scroll through the output and then it's going to be text, so view model, and then output. And then we're going to add some padding here. And then some small touches we can do for the UI is add a spacer here, add some padding in general for the V stack, and then add a navigation title. We can just say demo here. Now let's run this and see how it looks like. Cool, so this looks good. Now let's actually try to use this and type in something. Now, before we do anything and type in an actual input, if you recall, we went and go to view model. You see here that an empty user input is gonna be the same as hello. So if I just run the model here, it's just gonna say, hello, how can I assist you as the output? But now let's see if I can ask it to do something. Let's actually ask it, what is Swift? UI and then run the model and you can see here the progress uh, indicator that we added earlier and now you can see the whole response from the framework and then you can scroll down and see everything and now let's try something else let's say you want to summarize or rewrite something what you can do is just tell it rewrite this sentence and then let's copy what's actually on the screen. So Swift UI is a user interface framework developed by Apple for building user interfaces for iOS, macOS, watchOS, and tvOS. And now let's run the model. So as you can see, this works. And when you use this in your apps and you wanna modify it, what you can do is instead of the hello here, or instead of the user input, you can add something like rewrite beforehand and then change the button name to rewrite. So let's actually run through a quick example here. You can just change this to rewrite and then tell the model here to add something like user input and then internally you can have it do something like this right now let's do it again so let's copy all of this and then instead of rewrite let's try something else so we can do summarize 
and then let's go back here let's do summarize and then to be specific let's just do this and then run it so now if we paste what we had you don't need to tell the framework that you want to summarize it because this is already doing it for you right so if you click summarize it will summarize it and considering this is already small let's just confirm it works by rewriting this so this should work as well and that's pretty much it for this video so we covered the very simple minimal app that uses the foundation models in swift ui so from now on you can actually use this in your own app and modify it however you like thank you for watching